Hello, welcome back. So in this lesson, I would like to implement these uh, two paragraphs. So let's get started. So, so they say that uh, therefore in your event handling code, call get event till it returns a failure code. So let's do that first. So in our application, so in get event, get event should not be a one-time invocation, but rather a loop. So until it fails, meaning as long as HR is okay, so we'll keep going. But if it fails, so we'll we'll return. So you could say theoretically that if right as far as the failure and the return is concerned, so if failed HR then then we can return otherwise but wait a minute that doesn't make any sense because we don't have an infinite loop so let's create an infinite loop and just break out of it at this point so we'll enter an infinite loop so while true infinite loop like this and but wait a minute right we have a problem because we're returning um, well this function is the name should not really be get event but rather it should be get completion or is complete right because in normally you get an event and you handle it. You get an event, you handle it. You get an event, you handle it. This function doesn't really handle events. It's just looking for the completion. So I would say it should be a Boolean function, get completion, true, false. Is it complete? Is it not complete? That's what I would say because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. The, the whole cons the, the whole structure doesn't make too much sense. So bool. So I would say get get completion event. So while true, so we're gonna get event. If it fails, specifically with abort, but any type of failure we can break. There's no point in staying if it fails. If it succeeded, well then we don't need to ask anything, because if it failed, we wouldn't be here. So that so that's the cleanup, right? So it should return. So if it failed, break. But no, it should return. Return false. Return. Well, it should return the EV code in any case. So we should break here and always return the EV code. But what if there are, what if it extracts multiple times an EV code? So it's going to return the last EV code if it failed. See, it, it doesn't make too much sense. So I guess if, if we find ourselves here, then we should return false. And if we find ourselves over here, well, we should test, is it EC complete? So even here. If it's, if it's EC complete, if EV code is EC complete, then return true. In any other case, don't return. Keep on going. And that's what this is too much extra space is. That's what this line is going to do. That's an actual line of code because that's a go to the beginning of the while loop. So it's just going to loop again because it didn't fail. So it, we didn't leave the loop. And it's not an EC complete. So we're not going to leave the loop. So we're going to stay in the loop and again invoke get event. We're only going to return in two cases, otherwise we're going to stay in the infinite loop. 
So whoever is invoking get completion event, well, let's take control C and go to player H. This replaces the get event. So control V, semicolon, and let's go back. We don't need AC code. Back to the media player. So we're no longer invoking get event like this, but rather, let's see. So we're invoking completion. So is complete if is complete then we have we need this over here stop we don't need the timer and that's the way it is so if it's complete then stop otherwise don't do anything all right very good so f6 okay so that's the first thing that they mentioned that we should do where is right and the second thing they mentioned before you release you need to set notify window to null so in our play function we built the graph and at the end we did this so copy this line to the stop so in our stop just before we release control V and set this to null that's what they said we should do with a null pointer in your event processing code check whether your pointer is valid before calling get event why? Because we might actually be finding ourselves, this is very curious what they're saying. What they're saying is that because this is asynchronous, these two things are happening at the same time, what might happen is that we might have stopped the graph, but still received a notification. It could happen. There could be a way. That's what they're saying. I'm, I'm not saying that specifically this application might, m might experience such a scenario. But in general, it could happen. So before you extract, before you invoke get event, you might actually have to check that this might actually be null. Because we already stopped. So if it's null, then return return f it doesn't matter what you return but false is is better we don't know false means no so that's what they recommend let's see if this still works so file play let's see let's go into the function f11 it's not null, that's good, get, it succeeded, that's good, that's good. Let's put a breakpoint here, and here, F5, so we're here, F5, so let's test it, 1, 2, 3, play to completion, F11, even F5, we're in the return, F5, and it's perfect, we don't find ourselves coming back let's see are we ever here this would be curious 5 play f9 f5 f9 f5 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 so let's test it 1 2 3 f9 f5 no we don't find ourselves coming back to that point all right that's good play to the file stop Interesting. By the way, what happens when we stop? I mean, when we when we stop, do we get notified that it stopped? Play. 
That's fine. fine. So Is let's test. Like stop. There doesn't seem to be a notification notifying us that it stopped. So invoking. So so tear right because we tore down the graph. We didn't actually invoke stop. It's not proper to call it stop. It's it's really a bit of a misnomer. It's not the best name for the function. All right, so that was that, and we're basically finished, right? These steps prevent possible a possible error in which the application receives the event notification after it has released the pointer. All right, so you say. Event signaling. This is the other, the other way of receiving an indication that the phone line is not busy. There's two ways for my friend to notify me that the phone line is not busy. One way is that he, he called my name. Set no, I told him, set notify when I talk, call me. This is me. Call me. Yell out my name when you're finished using the phone line. That's one way. So they did. It's good, but obviously it's loud. Everybody, you know, it's, it's, but it's... It's, um... Noise, it's noisy. Anyway, event signaling, this is the cleaner way of working. So the filter graph manager keeps a manual reset event, right? So one way is for my friend to call me another way. Let's see the other way. The filter graph manager keeps a manual reset event that reflects the state of the event queue. Mm. So the event queue that has events has an event sort of flag or gate associated with it. A manual reset event that reflects the state of the event. Right, I go like this. Why? Because an event could even either be down, not signaled, or signaled. It's like a gate. A gate could be closed or opened. So if it's open, I can just go through it. If it's closed, I have to wait for it to be open. Then I go through and then have somebody else closes it or I close it. Okay, so so it keeps a manual reset event that reflects the state of the event queue. If the queue contains pending event notifications, so if the event contains pending event notifications, the photograph manager signals the manual reset reset event. Just like sending us sending our window a message, it signals the event. If the queue is empty, a call to the get event method resets the event. So when, every time we invoke get event, we were actually resetting the event. An application can use this event to determine the state of the queue. No, the terminology can be confusing here. The manual reset event is the type of event created by the Windows create event function. It has nothing to do with the events defined by Direct Show. We discussed it before. Call the get event handle method to get a handle to the manual reset event associated with the event queue of the filter graph. Wait for the event to be signaled by calling a function such as wait for multiple objects. Once the event is signaled and behind the scenes, this is actually exactly what the main thread does when waiting for events that ultimately end up in winproc. It's really not that much different, ultimately. All right, we're out of time, so let's just finish up reading. The following code example illustrates the approach. It gets the event handle, then waits in a hundred millisecond intervals for the event to be signaled. If the event is signaled, it doesn't make too much doesn't make too much sense because now all all we're gonna do is we're gonna wait on the event in any case. So before we were, we were blocking our main thread, and now we're again going to block our main thread. It doesn't look like we gained anything, only maybe, no, we didn't gain anything. So we'll come back to this and, and delve, delve a little more into it. So right now we're going to stop, and thank you very much. We'll see you in the next lecture.